When seeking out inspiration for drawings and artworks, the Animal Kingdom does a great job for providing us a variety of interesting and unique subject matter. And in today's tutorial, we will be looking at a very unique amphibian, and that is the frog. So with that being said, hey guys, my name is Matt. Welcome to another unique video by artincontext.org where we explore various art-related topics. And in today's tutorial, we will be breaking down the process of how to draw a frog. So with that being said, let's get into it. Now, there are many types of frogs to draw inspiration from, and you can scour the internet for some visual representation in terms of assisting you within this tutorial. But the way in which we're going to proceed with this drawing process is with some simple materials working with some pencil. You can use whatever you have available to you as you go through these various steps. Now the way in which we start with this drawing process is by starting off by shaping the frog. So we want to start by establishing the basic shapes of the frog and its different features. And this is where we want to basically draw in the basic head shape, body shape and leg shape. Now we will be drawing the frog from a side view which means Means more uh, features will be visible on one side than the other. The body can be drawn as this oval shape for now with a head attached as a smaller circular shape. The legs are quite simple, the hind legs bend backward towards the back side of the frog and are fairly larger than the front legs. The front legs sit kind of forward to stabilize the frog on the ground and start from the sides of the frog and kind of uh, move forward towards the front of the frog. The front legs also bend slightly as they move toward the front of the frog but once we have shaped the frog in its fundamental uh, components, working with these very simplistic and very uh, fundamental shapes, we can then start to lightly erase the drawing. Now once we have established these basic shapes, the intention with lightly erasing is to leave some kind of ghost line to assist us as we refine the features of the frog. So once we have lightly erased the frog sketch, we can then start to work on the outline to shape the frog into a little bit more of a realistic structure. Now starting with the head, we do want to make sure that the eyes bulge slightly because this is a very unique aesthetic or quality. Uh, within the frog they do have these bulging eyes. We'll only need to create an eye bulge again for the furthest eye as the eye in the foreground will be seen in its entirety. We will naturally be able to see the entire eyeball so this will kind of be slightly more flat than that of the uh, eye that sits in the background where we can only tell its three-dimensional quality by the bulging uh, quality along the outline of the head. Now we want to start drawing the digits on the frog's hand and these can be drawn as kind of thin finger-like shapes. So frogs generally only only have three digits in the feet and the hands at the ends of each digit they also have a little bit of a rounded quality like a circular structure that is used for climbing and assisting them as they move through various uh, terrain as we slowly work in line work we can start to refine the form of the frog and we want to make sure that we start to create a little bit of a rounding quality in the back of the frog we also want to start by giving more form to the hind legs in the frog drawing the hind legs do tend to bend so much that they basically rest on top of the hind feet which means that the digits of the hind feet should only be slightly visible. So we can draw the hind feet similarly to that of the front legs with three digits and having those uh, rounded qualities at the tips of each digit. As we move through the frog drawing and come back to the eye, we want to draw the eye in a more circular type of shape. So we also want to draw eyelids around the eye with lines around the eyelids to basically just suggest that bulging quality from the head and how we see it in the foreground. Now we can start to move on to adding in a little bit more shading and this is where we start to give a little bit more three-dimensionality and form to our frog drawing. So once we have worked through the entire frog drawing, slowly refining the shape, we now want to add more three-dimensionality to the frog drawing and this is where we want to start working on some shading to kind of further emphasize the structure and features. As we shade in the frog, we do want to consider the main areas that will be dark and light. This way we keep consistency in shadow placements on the frog and how it defines the dark and lightest areas in our frog drawing. We also want to use line work to kind of create a dark to light gradient from the bottom area of the frog. And again, this is where we want to think about how areas or various features in the frog will have more shadows uh, present than other features that would be a little bit more exposed to a light source. So this is going to define a little bit of a subtle shift of light exposure where the upper areas of the frog are more exposed to a light source than its underbelly area. We also want to use shading to emphasize size the different features as best we can and it's a good way to kind of once again just bring out the three-dimensional qualities to all the features thinking about where the light source is coming from and keeping our shadows consistently in the same kind of general area within our frog drawing now once we have done that we can then start moving on to adding in some unique features so once we understand the process of kind of utilizing shading to create three-dimensionality we now can move on to adding some unique features to our frog drawing and this is where we add in spots stripes and other details once 
once again you can look at various representations of frogs frogs do share a similar body type or anatomy that means we can kind of use this process to shape various species of frogs but when it comes to unique features it's really up to you in terms of how you'd like to play around with representing them whether it is uh, more of a scaly quality on your frog or it is just unique patterns in this case we'll add some spots but again you can really play around with what kind of features you would like to add otherwise frogs do have different patterns stripes and details and this is where you play around with your creative interpretation of how you'd like to create your frog and what kind of species you are representing again you also want to work with adding distinct details to main features such as the eye a good suggestion would be to add highlights to the eye and this way the eye has a reflective quality that represents its glassy surface so we do want to spend some time on the facial features especially the eyes we want to make sure we capture that bulging quality and you want to think about how the eye in the background would be a uh, very defining of the bulging quality in both eyes as we will see the bulge by the outline of the eye in the background but as we continue another good suggestion is to play around with adding stripes to the legs and spots to the body you can also play around with uh, the shape of each um, spot and the sizing of these various features you try to be a little conscious of how they are placed and how you wrap them around features um, as you draw them again this is where we think about the three-dimensionality of the structure and the rounded quality that oval shape in its body which means that our spots won't be these perfect circles they might have more of an oval shape as they wrap around the body and be slightly distorted but as we continue think about different shapes and styles of shapes in terms of how they work with various features and wrap around various features for instance if you are creating stripes think about how stripes would wrap around the cylindrical nature of the legs or how they would kind of wrap around the oval type um, curved surface area in the body so you do want to think about this to really emphasize the three-dimensional qualities through the use of these unique details also the spots also don't have to be perfect uh, so that's where you can start to think about changing them in various um, uh, sizes and kind of have them be a little bit more pebble-like and irregular in shape but as we continue we're going to refine the shading once more and from here we can proceed by adding some shading to the frog slowly working around the spots and stripes to emphasize them slightly further we also want to make sure that as we shade we also shade over the patterns to create a consistency of shadow formation in the frog drawing remember shadows will kind of be cast over the entire surface area of the frog including its patterns another good suggestion is to work in some shading around some of the spots and stripes and this is just a very unique way to shade around them to emphasize those unique features but at this point you can also start to work in different shading styles and play around with techniques to enhance the overall quality and textural quality more specifically within your frog drawing but otherwise guys try to work in some stippling some smooth shading play around with various shading techniques and see how it can be utilized to emphasize different textural qualities within your frog drawing um, as we continue with this process you can do so until you have completed your frog drawing remember shading is not only for establishing the areas that have shadow but can be used to define textures and surfaces and this is where we can explore how we can use them to emphasize all also unique details uh, within our frog and that's where we want to consider different shading styles but otherwise guys that is it from me today a few simple steps on how to draw a frog again this tutorial can be applied to various frog species where you kind of work the general shapes first define them and once you understand the general shape of the frog you can then work with your eraser to kind of leave some ghost lines and then slowly refine your frog into more identifiable features and then from there play around with shading and unique details but otherwise guys if if you like this video please let us know in the comment section below if you are interested in similar or related topics we'd love to hear back from you guys and you can show your support by liking and subscribing this helps to grow the channel which ultimately enables us to make more art related content for you guys which we love to do but thanks again for tuning in until next time see you in the next video cheers